button right there. I see it. So that I button is right there. And then when that goes away, I hit that button and then hit that button. Gosh, you act like there's so many buttons. Button, put, button, who's got the button? I need to put the camera back in here so we can see all the buttons. Now, there's more buttons. I see the buttons. I see us. We're there. It's today, Friday. I just asked you that, and you told me it wasn't. <laughs> can we act like it is? We Isn't can. Long weekend. <laughs> oh, it's that time. It is, uh, believe it or not, Thursday. Yeah, welcome into Bacon in Your Mailbox. It's Thursday, January the 21st, 2021, and this is... So it's, hang on, don't take the date down. It's okay. one... It's 0-1-21-2-0-21. Does that uh, have there's any... A lot of o, there's a lot of O's and ones and twos in there. There's a lot. I mean, if you've, all, if you've got one of those kits that only have so many zeros and ones and twos, you're probably screwed today. You're in trouble. Yeah, that you are. Well, I yep. am Greg Milby, community storyteller. That there is my uh, numbers enlightening friend and community <laughs> admirer, Jana Clark. Among other things. Who is in a new location today? I looks like you're in your office. No, you're at you're at so, you're at the chain. I mean, you're at the tourism, but you're out in the main area. Yeah, so I'm in the lobby. My office had a project going on, and so it's a little bit of a mess. And my computer was dead, so I needed a plug and a and a vacant table. And so I'm in the lobby of my office, okay, watching yeah. the world go by. I'm looking at um. So it, we're on North Mulberry, and so I am right across the street from the hotels and Burger King and Wendy's and I have a stoplight. So I, I mean, I'm just watching traffic. It's a nice morning, kind of cloudy. Yeah. It, it's going to get better. We'll hit that in the forecast here in a second, but first and foremost, hopefully sitting at his kitchen table, enjoying the show this morning, our friend Carter Blankenship. Good morning, Carter. I hope so. Wonder what Carter had for breakfast this morning. I realized I forgot to grab my eggs. You know, I have not had breakfast yet either. I have to work on that. Let's see. Who's our poster. Who do you think? Who do you think? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Maybe it's Vicky. Morgan Caster. Hey, Morgan. All caps. So she's excited to be in. She's serious about her good morning. Yeah. Kristen Parrott. It, hey, Kristen. Dustin keeps changing the name here. Good morning, Hog Nation. We're Bacon Nights. Listen, where I'm from, Hog Nation means something else. Yeah. And, and the SEC people don't, I don't know if you would like that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Are we going to talk basketball today or not? We can. Listen, I don't know if, if um, when I went, well, I fell asleep watching um, Arkansas. Um, I don't know if they won. Oh, they oh, 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 so we're going to talk about that game. Okay. <laughs> so after the UK game was over, we were watching Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody actually cares about that game. The Arkansas no. game. Listen, it was a sad few minutes in my house because I feel like my husband, I, he feels very defeated, like he's kind of given up. And I was like, uh-uh, don't do that. And he was like, you know, I don't mean it. Like, it's, I'm just having a moment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good morning to Monica. There's Vicky. Hey, Monica. Yeah. Hey, Vic. And How then, many uh, days till spring, Vicky? It's going to become your job to give me the countdown. Yeah. Brian says, throwback Thursday. Name your go-to song. So Brian's given the topics today. Okay. Dang. Name your go-to song. Go-to song. Uh, so oh. I, I got to think about that. Yeah, I, that's. I, I love so many. That's a lot to prepare for. Yeah. Yeah. Mary Stucker, Stucker Hall is in. My dad's in today. Hi, Mary. Hey, Raj. Got them all. Yeah. Morgan doesn't want to talk about the UK game. I know, Morgan. My husband, so, feel, husband feels the same way. So, I assured him last night when we went to bed that the sun would come up this morning. And this morning I go, look. And he goes, what? And I said, the sun came up. And he goes, Rrr. he growled I, at me. I thought for sure they had that. Because we oh. were sitting here recording, getting ready to record the podcast. And then we turned the game on just to see where it was. And it was the tight <laughs> game. You know, they were up by one with a yeah. little, little bit of time left. And we're like, okay, we got to watch this. I, I just really thought, I mean, it's Kentucky basketball. Normally when Kentucky is, is up late in a game or it's that, it, 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 the luck tends to go to the cats, but it just didn't work last night. I know. Yeah. 
2020. Hey, Vicky says, I think 58 days till spring. Check back later. So, well, that I love the direction that's going because the last time I checked in, last time I saw your countdown, I think it was 60 something. So, I love that. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for warm days and flowers to bloom. Bring it on. Yeah, I'm ready for life to get back to normal as we know it because, yeah. look, reasons to celebrate today, if you were looking for reasons to celebrate, and we all are, right? Heck yeah. Heck I mean, yeah. I, I, I love, I love our reasons to celebrate today is one that I absolutely love today, but I can't celebrate it this year. Oh, cause it's national hugging day, national hugging day. I saw that. I was like, what a punch. I know. I know. Man, I'm a hugger. I know, I know me too. Um, I'm going to become the biggest hug monster ever. Will we ever get back to that though? Oh Yeah. Okay. I, I hope so. Maybe we're just like you go in for a hug and somebody yells right and somebody yells left, or we just develop a new way of doing it. But listen, we all need that. We need that connection. We need to be able to hug people. And maybe I'll just become a patter on the back or I don't know, but I have to have it. Yeah. I know the man hugs are always good because you go to the side and then that whole yeah. little pat on yeah. the back. Yeah. Yeah. But look, I think as long as you face the opposite way, you're GTG in the future, not right now, in the future. So hugging, like cuddling, releases oxytocin, which not only makes yes. us feel good, it reduces pain and stress, yes. lowers blood pressure, yes. lowers the risk of heart disease. It also eases anxiety. But we can't be doing that right now. Well, all those reasons are why we have to get back to it. So we just um, be patient and hang in there, and we will have it back. Dustin mentions that it's National Squirrel Day, too, and that was the next one on the list. And, he, uh, yeah, I do remember the squirrel that scored the touchdown at the Cards game. Biggest biggest crowd reaction of the day that day. Seems That's so fun. So we're um, we're kind of like a squirrel because our topics tend to be very squirrelish. Oh. I, I, oh. It is. That's But, hey, <laughs> life's that way anymore. So, But with Squirrel Day, did you know there are over 200 types of squirrels in North America alone? I had no idea. I did not until I looked it up. Wow. Yeah. There and there are three types of squirrels. Wait, I thought you just said there were two hundred. There are there are two hundred types, but there are three type groups. Sorry, should have said that. Three groups of squirrels. What's the restrain a type and a type group? Uh a type group is okay. So the type group is <laughs> ground squirrels. Okay. Tree squirrels. Oh, okay. And flying squirrels. Okay. So we're talking, we're talking large categories and then categories within the category subcategories is really yes. what we're talking about. Which right, by the it. way, there was a little caveat at the bottom that, uh, flying squirrels can't actually fly. They have flap underneath their, uh, of skin underneath their legs that allow them to glide. So they don't really fly. Allow them to what? Glide? Glide. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I think I knew that actually. <laughs> the show is squirrely. <laughs> the show is a little squirrely. Well, you know. Yeah. Oh. Good morning, Elaine. Glad to have you in as well. Uh, welcome to the the tomfoolery. So, <laughs> uh, today's also sweatpants day. Gosh, dang it. If I had known that, I could have worn sweats today and said I'm celebrating National Sweatpants Day. I I'm in sweatpants. I'll celebrate today. that tomorrow. I'm Friday. in it. I mean, I mean, I'm a telecommuter, so 80% yeah. of the time, I'm a sweatpants guy. I'll celebrate that holiday tomorrow. I will put that in my calendar. And apparently, it's not as cool to wear sweatpants anymore. I don't know who said that. What do you mean? It's just apparently not a cool thing to wear huh. sweatpants. I, huh. I, I like I sweatpants. Agree. Yeah, right. I, I, mean, I disagree with that statement. There you go. I think it's the common man and woman's scrubs is what it is. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Uh, and what else is it? It's New England clam chowder day. I'm not really into that. So. I, I do love that. a good cup of chowder though. Oh, do you? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I always have it when I'm in the area. Like when you, when you're where it's a thing, you know, if it's, if you're traveling there, it's so good. But I think it's one of those things that in order to get really good clam chowder, you have to be, in the New England area. <laughs> and it is, Vicki, you're right. Another reason to celebrate it is Pirate Choke Day. Oh, I got to find that. I have it. 
Oh, I was going to say, you don't have one? Okay. I do. Yeah. I just got to I got to remember where I put it. <laughs> so I, I found, as I was looking for the reasons to celebrate, I, I found this um, in 1986, so 35 years ago today, okay. the first nude Olympics happened. You would know that. <laughs> I just, I looked it up, but, but what intrigued me about that is that there were a hundred people that participated in the first nude Olympics. A hundred? A hundred. <laughs> and it was in That's Purdue, Indiana. <laughs> Why? And it was 38 degrees. Why would you have the nude Olympics in 38 degree weather? <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. That's the only reason I even brought that up is to, that's, that's dumb. I wonder how, um, how many different, um, I almost said categories, how many different, um, sports they did, how many different types of sports. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to guess they had to write on themselves to know what team they're on or any of that. Absolutely. I don't even know. Or they wore little bitty, bitty, bitty backpacks. <laughs> but then, then you're not totally nude, right? I don't know. Oh, my God. That's just something I, I don't think I could ever. Yeah. No, 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 no. Wouldn't be good. Hey, Morgan says joggers are cool. Uh, yes, I have. Okay, three. so that's it. Mm -hmm. Sweatpants are, joggers are, is just a new description for sweatpants. Kind of, I, I think joggers have a taper to them. Sweatpants don't. Oh, you mean like, um, okay, so in my house, this is, but I live with teenage boys. Um, jo there's joggers and then there's basketball pants. We call sweatpants basketball pants, I think, because okay, they no, don't have a cuff at the bottom. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, joggers do not have a cuff at the bottom. Oh, Joggers I, do? Uh, not if you're getting good joggers. Huh. Okay. Well, I guess if you want to go back to, to who made sweatpants cool was Sylvester Stallone and Rocky. Uh, uh, oh, yeah? Yeah, that's a, apparently where, you know, the sweatpants craze got started. Now, I guess they would have elastic at the bottom there. Now, I don't call those joggers. Those are sweatpants to me. Joggers are pants that I would jog in. I wouldn't jog in those. I would, the, uh, the, those are the ones that have no elastic at the bottom but they taper real tight. Oh. So that's how it goes for me. Um, I, need, um, I need an urban dictionary for all the variations of sweatpants. Look, there's too much pressure on knowing what's going on <laughs> and what's not going in the world anymore. Even emojis are getting out of hand. Why? Because you don't how? know which one's which. You know, we've had oh, this you know, discussion. That's true. We had the discussion have, of the praying hands and the that whole deal there, and that's you do you. Listen, I got so much feedback from that. It's this. It's I mean, I my friends may have been split down the middle on that one. It was so fun. Right. So there is a website that is okay. the is is Emojipedia. <gasps> I might need that. Has released some info on the latest emoji trends. According to its data, one in five messages now contain at least one emoji. Oh, I'm not surprised. One in five. I, I almost would have said it was more than that. Yeah. I think we're addicted to them, but I love them too, so I can't kind of make fun. The most popular emoji, emoji of 2020 was face crying tears of joy, which Elaine covers right there. Yep. Yeah. Um. The emojis. I use that one when I laugh at stupid stuff. Yeah, and and it's usually <laughs> and when you when you use it, it, it it's near the front anyway, so it's easier right. to get to. Right, right, right. So the emojis that saw the biggest jump in use in 2020 were the yawning face, pinching fingers, the otter, shopping cart, and a microbe. Microbe is for the virus. The shopping cart is online shopping. I don't get the otter. I have. I don't understand the otter either. No. I don't know what Some situation. Of sense, but not all of them. Yeah. Well, I mean, what do you? What is it? You otter, come over and see me, or I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what the otter would be for. <laughs> Working from home, playing with the otters. <laughs> now the emojis that saw the biggest 
<laughs> the emojis that saw the biggest drop in uh, uh, popularity or ones related to travel, like the airplane, ones related to sports, like the soccer yeah. ball, baseball, and basketball. Yep. So. Yep. Very, um, that's very understandable. Yep. So though, that's, uh, that's your emoji update. If you're, you're one of those people that, uh, needed that. Maybe you've been waiting for the emoji update. You're like, I don't know what to use. I don't know what's cool. I don't know what's not cool. That's why you watch the show. Is to My favorite cool. emojis are, um, are food emojis because I, I just think that they're fun because there are so many different ones. And I also am a big fan of um, the um, faces that are like the, maybe not the crying tears faces, but the meat, the, like if you're mad or frustrated or the ones that you can put your hand over your head, like I'm so silly. Or if you do something silly too, you can raise your hand. I like mm -hmm. those. Yeah. All right. There's your test. Say otter either three times real fast. Go. Otter ether, otter ether, otter ether, otter. <laughs> what? Otter ether, <laughs> otter ether, otter I don't know. That's what Vicky <laughs> wanted us to do. Vicky's playing with us. Yeah, you are going to have to Google freaking joggers because there's a different okay. definition for that. So, I mean, really? That's where we're at. All right, so uh, another discussion and the continuation. By the way, the popcorn discussion the other day was great. Oh, my gosh. I still have popcorn in my office. I, oh, why I, do you have popcorn in your office? I forgot about that, Jana. Listen, I, I, a public thank you to Greg. After he went to the theater, he dropped off a, the biggest bag of popcorn you've ever seen in my, to my building. I even shared with my coworkers, and there is still popcorn in this building. That was the biggest bag of popcorn ever. Yeah. And after I had a few pieces of it, I was like, hang on, I got to go get a fountain Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I had, that was a great day Tuesday afternoon. Cause I go over wow. to the theater and I, I, I film and you know, the smells of popcorn were just, Oh, it was great. Fresh popcorn. Oh my gosh. My truck smelled like fresh popcorn. When I brought you your popcorn, Fabulous. I come home, I take all of the video that I'd shot and was working on producing the national popcorn day video yep. while eating popcorn. Best day ever especially of this week. It was a, it was a great day. Now, awesome. I, now speaking of that, the, the best day ever might've been the best day of the week might've been yesterday afternoon. Oh yeah. So I, I, maybe I should just run the promo. Okay. All right. You probably haven't seen this yet. All right. I haven't. There, there's a uh, new show wait. that starts on Kentucky's heartland. Okay. And here is the promo. Okay. Hi, oh my I'm Joe. And you probably don't know this, but I'm having a new talk show starting Friday. You'll see it right here. Well, it's about me and Greg Milby. Well, please sit back, relax on watching my show. Grab some popcorn and enjoy the show. On Friday. Oh my gosh, that's the cutest kid I've ever. Joe, <laughs> Joe's doing a show. It's Joe's show. It is. It's the world of now. It it it's going to shift back because in negotiations yesterday, Joe wanted to do this show, and he has come up with some great ideas. Oh, so, that's so fun. So we're we're gonna we're gonna have a challenge, Jana, to to not lose our spot somehow some way oh my gosh that's so listen if i'm gonna lose my spot to somebody it could be joe because he's one of my favorite kids in the whole wide world so so joe we, we, we came come with this idea to do the show and, and so oh joe was gosh. doing the show well joe wanted me to do the show with him so i'm, I'm okay. gonna do the first one with him and then yeah. it's it's the joe show because he's got plenty yeah. of topics and i'm yeah. not sure how much i can handle of that show after yesterday <laughs> because I almost, I almost knocked my table over. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's what here's what the show will consist of tomorrow. We have different work, different parts. You have to break it up. Uh, okay. We have snack time during the show. Oh yeah. So Joe brings a box, and it's a box of snacks from South Africa. Of course. 
and then we talk games Good. and we make a slingshot on the show. Sounds like the perfect The World According to Joe show. Yeah. Now, it is show number one, and we remember our show number one. It was yeah. an even more train wreck than show number 84 here is. Yeah, I mean, we haven't so, progressed very far, but I got right. faith in you and Joe. Right. Joe's going to progress quickly. He was just that super excited. That is so yesterday. phenomenal. And he might have had a little sugar during the show. Not a good idea. We put that in the <laughs> post-show notes. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, so hang on. So tomorrow, it'll be out there tomorrow? Tomorrow afternoon. I, I've okay. got a lot of work All to do. Right. If you only know okay. how long it took me to put that promo together last night. because. <laughs> oh. So uh, one part, the audio was not super great because Joe wanted to watch the first section and uh, and somehow <laughs> we disconnected our microphones uh, from our our. Because I had a lapel mic on him with his battery pack. Wow. Which the, we couldn't put the battery pack in his pocket because his pocket is half the size of the battery pack. Right. If you'd stuck it on his britches, it probably would have pulled him straight down. That's exactly what it was doing. Yeah. So yeah. he had to set a specific way in the chair because I didn't want to duct tape it to him. But oh his pants gosh. were falling down because the battery pack was <laughs> blue. Oh, that is so fun. I'm actually so excited. So he's got great plans. We're going to talk a lot I of bet. different stuff. And then we are going to have little bitty morsels of Joe periodically during the week where he is going to talk about things that he likes. And he's going to ask you to share what you like. That's and, so adorable. And maybe we'll use that in, in our show here. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, uh, yeah, uh, Dustin says he loves it. The <laughs> idea started years ago during March Madness. Yeah. And and Joe's it. just been wanting to do this for a long time. And and Kim, he is stinking cute. And he, he is, is stinking cute. Smart kid. He is he is future president, um, star. I mean, the kid has star power you wouldn't believe. Right. Yeah. I, I, I'm being honest when I say this. I this show of his, I don't want to be on it. I'm gonna produce it. I don't want to be on it because I know when we put this out there and it's gonna go on YouTube and we're gonna make shorter versions and we're gonna do Joe's TikToks. Um cute. I mean, this kid is gonna go. He, oh, he's yeah. gonna he's gonna be a, a social media influence. That's so fun. Now, he may not be as much of a social media influence as our friend Ken Salee, who just joined in. Good morning, everybody. Good hey, better say. late than never there. Yeah. You missed Joe's promo. You'll have to go back and watch that. You'll have to go back and watch Joe. Yeah. So, uh, but Joe and I talk a little bit about board games, and, and I won't give any of that away. But okay. now, I, I know your family are, is a board game family. Oh, we are gamers for sure. Yeah. We try to be, but I think Gavin's a little too competitive. And yeah, I might be a little on the competitive side. Oh, we so are too, all of us. We don't play as much. But I, I did find this interesting. I found an article that talks about board games and card games and about, you know, playing those, of course, have been up over the last year. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely for us. I mean, that's kind of yeah. when it started. But some people, as they've played games, they've decided to add new rules or their own rules into specific board games. Now I'm a rule follower. I like to follow rules on these board games because I don't want to start, you know, all of a sudden here's a weird rule out of nowhere that, that I got to remember. Now you and your family, you, you create rules, right? Well, so we create rules when we have to in order for there not to be bloodshed. Oh, um, and also, I will tell you, I've learned that um, games where you can play partners um, help control the competitiveness because at least it's two against two instead of instead of anything else that's crazy. But we do because we need it to work for us because there are certain things that we like. You know how um, have you ever played cards with your friends and you hear the term a card laid is card played? Mm -hmm. All right. So we have this. We have this thing that everybody gets to pick up the card that they've played one time. But once you do it once, you do not get to do it again. And that's for me mm. because I need at least one of those every single game I play. Oh, okay. It's for you. <laughs> now, my mamma, you take your hand off the card, you played it. I know. I know. And I respect that after I make the one biggest mistake of the game and I get to take it back and I feel better. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now, my mamma would, would leave her hand on the card for 30 minutes. 
until she decided <laughs> if that was it. So there probably should have been. We also have this thing about rushing people because depending on the game that you're playing, sometimes you need more time to think about your next play. So it's one thing if you're playing a game that doesn't take as much thought, right? And sequence. So we both, no. you like sequence too. I, I, sequence is my favorite game. Okay. So sometimes you need some time because you thought you knew where you were going to put your little thing. And then two players ahead of you, they make a move that causes you to rethink your entire strategy, right? Yes. Yeah. And and the so, worst thing is, is I got a drummer in her family. Oh. Right. All the time. Yeah. 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 Sorry. I, I interrupted you. Go ahead. So, and I don't like for people to talk when I'm trying to think about my move. Oh, like just, I just did on you then. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm, when I'm contemplating my next sequence, phenomenal play, I mm -hmm. need some silence. I need yeah. some silence. And that is extremely difficult for my family. Well, and, and one of my kids might be focused on other stuff too. And I want to say, and if they're my partner, I'm like, hey, you got to focus here. Yeah. 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 Cause. Yeah. You, if you don't focus here, we got issues because you're yeah. going to miss that, that, that specific, especially in sequence. Oh, for and the sure. Whole not, not tipping off your, your partner. Yep. My family cheats at that all the time. Uh, <laughs> now, Margie, who is, by the way, Joe's agent, because. Joe's agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Margie, uh, hopefully you, you, you didn't just join us. We played Joe's promo. So uh, the biggest rule, the winner cleans up so they don't brag too much. Wow. Oh, I need to start that one, too. I like that one. Mm. That's a good one. So uh, it, Dustin mentions that his sister and brother-in-law played Monopoly in college and he beat her so bad that we still don't bring that up. That was two decades ago. Wow. So here are a couple of Monopoly rules that was brought up in this article that I, I, I think is interesting. Okay. So uh, they have the mugging rule in Monopoly. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> if you land on a space that you are currently occupying, Okay. You can choose, they can choose to mug you. So if you're on Park Place and I roll and I land on Park Place with you, I can choose to mug you and you take turns rolling the dice. And if one, whoever rolls the higher number, they steal $50. Oh my gosh. If the other person rolls the higher number, th then you go to jail. Listen, my so my family would probably love that, but they would spend all their time trying to land on wherever I was so they could mug me. They would become obsessed with mugging their mom. I can see it now. That, that's, I, I, I kind of like that rule. I think it is funny. I think that's fun. And it's, you know, it, it's, it's a little risky. Uh, I like it. So, and then the other rule is that this family is that every time their dad farts, everybody gets $100. Stop it. And they and then this person says it's it's a small compensation for the assault, but they usually get two or three hundred dollars every game of free money. Two or three hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I I don't I don't I don't know if I could do that. Yeah. Mugging at the Milbies. Oh, I would be in for that. Yeah. Yeah. But Monopoly's too long of a game for me. I, I I just, it's like Uno sometimes. I love the game of Uno, but when you get into that marathon game where the the colors have gotten dispersed to everybody and, and now it's going to be a three-hour game, we've done that at camp sometimes where it's one o'clock in the morning and nobody wants to quit and we're out there playing Uno begging for anybody to win. We have even done, we've even gotten so tired of games done. We'll be like, okay, no matter what, this is the last hand. And then that happens to be the last hand. And this isn't, isn't Uno, obviously. It, somebody all of a sudden gets a big hand and they're back in the game and they're like, wait a minute, can we just play one more hand? <laughs> right. And then I have to be the one that says, I have to leave because I have to go take somebody somewhere or cook dinner or something. Like sometimes I have to like push a big pause and we have to finish it the next day. Elaine's caused the uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. 
<laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, uh, yeah. And, and Morgan says she don't let Jr. teach the kids how to play Monopoly because he tries to to charge interest on everything. Well, he's a financial wow. guy. Of course he is. Nice. Yeah. Um, when we were little, we left our kids with Mitch's dad and a college friend of his that was in town. And when we walked back in the door, they were sitting at the kitchen table playing poker. And I swear, my father-in-law has never laughed so hard. And he was like, you'll never, he said, that's the last time you'll leave your kids with us. And Mitch goes, uh-uh, I need you to, t- <laughs> that's a good idea. Teach those kids how to play. <laughs> we still love to play poker. We yeah. play a lot of, hold them. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I, I played that for a while and then nobody around here played it and then some of the some people that i was playing poker with they, they were just way too serious oh uh-oh. yeah and then i'm too so cheap put, to go play for money we all put our own money in the pot and then we use chips that are like 150 200 but there's only five dollars you know maybe five dollars each in the pot and the winner wins um 15 and the loser gets your money back that's pretty much how we do it okay yeah so there is some incentive there um but i think it's really fun to to, you know, bet $1,500 on a hand when you know it's really only $5. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. oh, yeah. Well, I did that in a charity event. Uh, I guess Horseshoe Casino. I don't know what it's called now. But when they Fun. when they first opened, they used to do media events. Every time they had the, the Texas Hold'em organization in town yeah. while they were doing the big event, they would have a, uh, a media event where – all your radio personalities and TV personalities, they would invite so many of them and we would go and we would play and they would give you like $500 in chips. Fun. And, and you sat down and, 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 and the winner got a pretty nice prize, but all the losers, they had a buffet. And so you got to eat at the buffet for free. There you go. Every time <laughs> I was out. Well, actually one time I went out on the first hand <laughs> because I was like, you know, I am going all in because I thought I had a really good hand. I'm going if I no go all job. in here, I'm going to be set for a while. No, I was setting at the buffet, which worked out good because they had right. really good chicken wings. So yeah, you were set all right. Yeah. So all right. So board games. Um, I am going to make up the mugging rule. I think I'm going to do that, and I might do I, the I'll gas the gas money. Yeah, I think that's funny. So all right, other topic that we mentioned the other day. And okay. we never got to before we get to the pirate joke and then wrap things up. All right. So there's, there's, there's research out there about making your bed. So failing to make your bed in the morning may actually help you help you keep healthy. Scientists believe not making your bed can make not you making your bed. Yep. All right. Let's research, hear this. Research suggests that while an unmade bed may look, scruffy or dirty or whatever insert your own word there it also uh is unappealing to house dust mites that could cause asthma and other allergies according to a kingston university study they discovered the bugs cannot cannot survive in the warm dry conditions found in an unmade bed so you get somebody at your door yeah, I have a delivery at the door. Okay. So, if you um, if you make your bed, mm-hmm. when you get back in your bed, you have a lot more company. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so I'm calling on all the Baconites to give Greg some bed bug stories, and I'll be right back. Okay. This is the first of the show, right? You, you, you stall. You go get the delivery. Right. I can't wait for you to open it live on the show. Uh <laughs> I'm the healthiest person on the planet. That's good. I, and, and, you know, you notice it's Dustin and, and Ken and us guys. I, I don't make the bed. And, and Kim is the same way. I mean, nobody goes in the master bedroom but me and Jennifer, I guess. Or they shouldn't. We keep the door closed. I, I'm just now in the wintertime. Maybe I'll do that to keep. So when you get in the bed, it's a little bit warmer but I don't necessarily think I, I, I should have to make the bed. Now we'll, we'll give this stat to Jana when she gets back as well. The average bed could be home to up to one and a half million dust mites. One and a half million dust mites in your bed. 
The bugs, which are less than a millimeter long, feed on scales of human skin and produce allergens that are easily inhaled during your sleep. So yeah, you are inhaling and she just ran off. Did she run away? Yeah. So Vicky says she likes, uh, she makes her bed before leaving the, the bedroom. It's a habit. Well, see, I, I can't because Jennifer's still in it and that would just be rude. So, uh, Monica says an allergy doctor told her not to make the bed. All right. I think we're onto something here. Um, Ken, good luck with that. I'll let you know how, how you go. And, and a cold bed is not the best, Dustin. No, it's not. A warm bed is. Um, and But Kim straightens the blankets up right before you get it. Now I will fold it over periodically, but I do think you need to leave that stuff down there now because if you don't, one and a half million bed bugs or dust mites in your bed. Bed bugs, totally different deal, I guess. So um, I think I might have just made life a lot easier for a bunch of guys here. So at this point, I would be saying, hey, Jana, I think it's that time. But Jana is off. I think she might have even forgot us. I hear her talking. But we're doing a show. Hmm. Maybe I'll take the time to mention our wonderful sponsors like Stith Family Farms in Painville, Kentucky. StithFamilyFarms.com. Brian Dennis with the Award Center. Amazing Glaze and Donuts and her friends at Bluegrass Cellular. Thank you. Thank you, Jana. I mean, did, it, <laughs> did you go have a meeting somewhere? Listen, the guy goes, I have 45 boxes. <laughs> and I was like, hang on. I got to go open the back door for you. Okay. You need a second to get your breath. Did you, panic? Did you think I wasn't coming back? I did. I, you I'm just, sorry. I saw you walk like a little cockroach down that back wall <laughs> and, and wave. And I didn't know if you were like, I'm out of here. I didn't know if you could see me. <laughs> yeah. Dustin said you look like a deer running in the background. I was, oh. I was getting to the back door because when I told him, he, I said, could you just set it right inside the door? Like, I thought maybe it was like a box. And he said, it's a pallet. It's 45 boxes. And I was like, oh, hang on. Don't put that right here because I can't move it. All right. What are you getting? It's 45 boxes. It's fine now. So it's um, state travel. It's it's state travel guide. Like, so the state of Kentucky does mm -hmm. an annual official uh, visitors guide. We are in it, obviously. With, along with some of our local attractions. And so it is our allocation of those okay. for the entire year. And so it's a large delivery. Now you got to find a place to put them. I have a place. It's just that that place is right by the back door and way for not even close to the front door. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're, we're back Ooh. and we're glad. Yeah. Thank hey, you so much. Ken says, if we're interested, him and some friends are waxing their nose hairs live on YouTube soon. Yes, I am very interested. You let me know well, when that's happening. I'm happened. glad I missed the bug bug conversation because I was not, I, I know that's going to make me like Willie in my sleep tonight and I can't right, handle it. Right, right. I, I, I gave them stats and I wouldn't tell you that, you know, there, I, I wouldn't tell you that there's up to 100, uh, up to 1.5 million dust mites in your bed Stop at any it. given time. I, I, I wouldn't do that. that. Right. I can't hear you. La, 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 right. la, la, la. Right. So I'm just saying. But <laughs> a lot of the Baconites, except for Vicky, who, you know, of course Vicky does. She gets up at 2.30 in the morning, probably, oh, yeah. makes her bed. Yeah. Because uh, technically, I don't know if you could say she makes her bed in the morning, because I think it's still in the middle of the night. Still in the middle of the night. I'm yeah. a fake maker. I just kind of throw it up. But it, it does kind of look made. I mean, it's yeah. definitely covering, so I will I will have to be careful. Get better. You mean 1.5 million dust mm -hmm. mites. Isn't that horrible? There you go. Yeah. Well, there may be 1.5 million dust mites. But there is only one. Only one. <laughs> yeah, there is only one pirate joke of the week. No doubt about it. And if I can hit my magic buttons again, I'm all over the place. And then, hey, stall just like you were running in the back. Because uh, I've, I've got a, uh, I forgot to add in my drum roll. Oh, no, no need to stall. I'm fast. <laughs> That's a very long drum roll. Yeah, it still doesn't have a ting on the end. I'll work on that. Ching. All right, Brett, so here's, give me that pirate joke, Jana. What do you call a pirate with three eyes? 
Wait, right? Yeah. What do you call a pirate with three eyes? I don't know, Jenna. What do you call a pirate with three eyes? A pi i i i <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was pretty funny. I like that. <laughs> so, how do you pick these? Do you I do make you them go up. you go through the whatever you go through the <laughs> list, and if you chuckle, you you write it down. Pretty much. You, Sometimes I test them out on my family, and they don't think any of them are funny. So that's kind of become a lost cause for me. Yeah. Um. Sometimes I ask Alexa, but she tends to tell you the same two or three over and over. Yeah, she'll do that. What I love is when I'm looking for one and I hit the jackpot and I find like three or four in a row and then I just um, take a screenshot and save them. That's hey, what I do with that one. Like I had that one in the hopper. You made a preteen laugh. So Woo! yeah, that, that, that's got to be a good one. So now I, I used to run jokes by Jennifer that I was going to use on the radio. I'd write some yeah. stuff, and make some notes and say, oh, I think about saying this and she would, wouldn't get it. And so I wouldn't use it. Well, then when I started using one of those people laughed and I thought, wait a minute, maybe it's there my source. Go. I mean, she is an accountant. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. My kids don't think anything is funny. Um, and really if someone else shared it with them, they probably would think so. It's just, I think they just like to, um, they just like to get me going. They just like to, you know, act like what I say is not funny as far as yeah. pirate jokes. All right, so we learned how to make new board game rules today. Uh, we Love learned it. how not to make your bed. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, hugging is cool. We just can't do that. Hugging is cool. Pirate jokes can be funny. Can be funny. I mean, I think we had a pretty successful show. It's been a great day. The only thing we didn't do is our weather forecast, which we can do that quickly here. I will De tell you that it's kind of gloomy outside still. Well, clouds will be on the decrease this afternoon. We'll get to 50 right. today. I can take that. I'll take that. Partly cloudy 29 tonight and partly sunny and 40 degrees on Friday. So there you go. I'll take it. Got all that in. And tomorrow you get to wear your joggers or your sweatpants. I'm wearing them today. I wear them every day. I, Whatever I'm, you call them. I'm trying to invest in new joggers. Love it. Because, you know, I would like to be just jogger guy. White t-shirt and jogger guy. I'm going to find for tomorrow for sure. Like I'm celebrating it tomorrow. I may actually celebrate sweatpants day for the next three days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I will give you advice guys. Yeah. Women wear yoga pants out in public. Yeah. If you've gained weight during this stuff that we don't mention, because I don't want to put any money in the jar <laughs> and you might went from a medium to an extra large. Yeah. Don't walk out of the house with your medium joggers on. Don't. And don't wear yoga pants. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that and is what I'm saying. And if you're a woman and you're over the age of 18, you can wear yoga pants or um, leggings. Just cover up your bum. Sorry. Woo. That was a little PSA for Why you. Why would you cover up your husband? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. There. We'll appreciate that. Yeah, there are some that are really, really, really tight. Let's just yeah. say. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, she is Jana Clark, community admirer. I am Greg Milby, community storyteller. Thanks for joining us for episode number 84 of Bacon in Your Mailbox. Woo. Bye, y'all.